morning, YouTubers. Another dreary day on the way to work today. Still having a bunch of supply problems. Uh, as far as my industry goes, in the motorsports, having a hard time getting side by sides and ATVs. Uh, motorcycles, boats, all the fun stuff, all the cool stuff you don't really need but you want. So anyway, I was debating on what to talk about this morning. I thought of a couple different things. I think I'll uh, hit on one that I think is pretty important. As I say this, I'm trying to figure out which one it's going to be. So I'm still thinking it's like when uh, the waiter or waitress comes over and you and your wife are reading the menu and they ask if you're ready and you're like, oh yeah, sure. Take her order first because I'm still trying to figure out what I want. <laughs> anyway, I think um, we'll discuss today about uh, purchasing one of those set items. That's kind of my expertise of selling those items. I'll give you guys some wisdom on purchasing them. First of all, you know, it's, you know, some of the items, you know, are definitely just, are more want than need. Um, I try to focus on what do I really need first. But if you get to the point where, hey, you've got some disposable income, you want to get something that you want, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you can afford it. You know, so uh, if you're if you are going to make a, a purchase for a want item, like an ATV, a motorcycle, a side by side, a boat, first thing you should do is watch a bunch of YouTube videos, see, see what you like, do do some research. You know, I'm into motorcycles, so I'm always checking out different bikes and I try to learn as much as I can about a bike or, or whatnot before I, I make my purchase before I make a decision you know believe it or not you're going to be you're people already have predetermined what what they want to get or what they like it's generally already in your head you're just using uh, YouTube to affirm what you already want um, if you can and it's actually really tough you know really listen to both sides of the argument you know whether the the pros and cons of getting whatever item in it item it is you know like side by sides you know the pros and cons of a belt versus a direct drive a motorcycle you know pros and cons of Belt drive, chain drive, shaft drive, Japanese, American, Chinese, whatever. You know, what are the benefits of each one? And, you know, if something happens because they're machines, with all of these items, you need to remember well, how, how available are the parts when something happens later, especially like now during, during this situation we find ourselves in 2020. Some parts are, are, are really hard to, to come by. So it depends on, you know, where, where everything's manufactured. So anyway, you do your research. When you decide what you want, you need to go online and find out the true value of that item. So if you're buying something new, I would suggest that you go to the uh, the manufacturer's website and find out what their retail value is for that item. And generally, they'll they'll say, you know, hey, it's a uh, it's a Honda uh, Rancher, you know, four wheel drive manual shift. Price is sixty two ninety nine. 
know that price of whatever you're going to be purchasing, whether it's a boat, motorcycle, side by side, whatever. Know that price. Write it down. Generally, down in the uh, the lower section, like you scroll down on the same page that gives you the price, it'll let you know if there's a destination fee or setup fees that go along with that price, and it'll tell you the manufacturer's uh, suggested fees because all the dealerships are going to try to charge you uh, a destination fee, which what it costs to get that product to them. And then a setup fee, what it costs for them to have one of their mechanics finish and uh, finish assembling it. Because most of the items don't come all the way assembled. You know, it's not like they got to put the engine together or anything. But a lot of times they got to put wheels on, maybe handlebars, um, boats. Boats require a lot of setup stuff. You got to put a motor on half of them sometimes, and then batteries and stuff. So. You know, they try to pass that along to you, which, you know, I get, I understand that. I work in the industry, so, you know, I, I've, I've got arguments pro and con, but there is a cost for it, and they try to maintain their profit margin by passing those costs on to you. But you need to know what that retail price is. Now, if you're buying something used, you need to go online and go to NADA.com and look up the, the trade values for your your item or the the, uh, the retail value. They'll give you a, uh, you know, like a bad shape, good shape, and then a retail value for, for boats, motorcycles, side-by-sides whatever but we're focusing on uh, wants not needs I consider a car or a truck a need unless it's unless it's a sports car or something like that but anyway we'll stick to stick focus got to focus so anyway so find out that you know if you're going to be looking at you know a used motorcycle or a used side by side know that you're going to a a retail store you know like a dealership they're gonna definitely want to get at least retail for for an item so you want to know what that retail price is and then my advice on getting those retail prices whether it's new or used is know what they are and don't pay more than that because a lot of dealerships especially now when items are harder to get, they'll, they'll tack on a premium sometimes. Dealership I doesn't, don't do, that I work for doesn't do that. But I've worked for dealerships that have. And sometimes the premium would be, you know, $1,000 over retail, sometimes six to $8,000 over retail, depending on the area, Riverside. <laughs> um, so, you know, you, you need to know that information. You need to be well armed with it. So when you go in there, that'll help you negotiate. For one, just don't pay over that. You know, that should be the top price that you pay no matter what. That's the top. You know, for a want item, not a need item, but a want item. If you if you're gonna get a toy, do not pay more than retail for it. Because when you go to sell that toy, when you go to a retail dealership, let's say you want to trade in something, they're want to, they're going to go to the NADA and they're going to look up, uh, you know, poor or the lowest price value for your item. So they're going to say, oh, it's you know whether it's in prime condition or not. They're want to gonna they're gonna want to give you low book for whatever you're trading in. That's that's their goal is to give you that or less, and that's so they can keep their profits higher because they're a retail store. They got to keep the lights on. They got to pay people like me and all the the guys at the shop. So 
they're trying to protect their margins. There's nothing wrong with you knowing these things. You know, you should go in there knowing before you purchase anything what the low book value on what you're buying or trading in is. And you need to know the top value, the retail value. If you know these things going in, it will definitely help you negotiate. And if they come out with some numbers, show them. You know, in this modern age, you can pop that stuff right up on your phone and show them, hey, this is what the values are, you know, and then negotiate from there. I'm not going to tell you what, you know, what your top or bottom number should be other than don't pay more than retail. And, you know, if, if nothing else, that'll help you later when you go to sell or or trade in the vehicle. And if you can, always, always put the money down. You know, you don't want to finance in registration and your taxes because that's not you know you finance that in you as a consumer will look at that and be like well I paid you know eight thousand dollars for this ATV well no you paid six to two ninety nine for the ATV the rest was fees or taxes or whatnot so you don't want to finance that stuff in so you always want to try to take care of that with some sort of down payment put you in a better position when you go to trade in later, especially especially if you finance. You know, if you're financing any of these things, you, know, you don't want to pay interest on that stuff. Because a year down the line, you're still paying off the fees, you know, whether it's taxes or freight and assembly, and you really haven't started paying for the vehicle yet. And a lot of people don't think of that. So you go to trade in, now your $62.99 vehicle has taken like a 20% hit. So now it's only worth, you know, five grand. So now the they want to give you five grand for your trade-in, but you paid $62.99, and then you paid another, you know, $1,200 for taxes and setup and prep and document fees and all that stuff. Well, shoot, man, you you're still paying on that twelve hundred dollars because you're only paying, you know, two hundred dollars a month. It's only been a year or so. You know, with interest and all, you're hardly, hardly doing anything. So, if you can't afford to put money down on a vehicle that's a toy or a want item, you shouldn't buy it because realistically, you can't afford it. I know you think, oh, I can afford a. A $200 a month payment. Well, if you come in and you're like, I can afford a $200 a month payment, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. Uh, you know, how much are you going to put down? And you're like, well, I don't have anything to put down. Well, that's. You got $200? No, I got zero down. Well, if you don't even have enough to make a first payment to put down, how the hell can you afford this vehicle or this uh, this this item? You can't really can't. It's going to put you in a bind. Don't do it. Don't do it. I make a living off of people like this all the time. And I'm telling you, if you can't afford to put money down, you can't afford that thing. Or you shouldn't be buying it. Your money could be better used doing something else. my words of wisdom when buying something that's a, a want item whether it be a side-by-side -side, ATV motorcycle boat know your values don't pay more than retail whether it's new or used always put money down and if you can't afford to put money down you can't afford that item don't buy it 
Everyday BS. I'll see you YouTubers later.